so in previous lecture we talked about the actual vapor compression refrigeration cycle how it deviates from the theoretical standard vapor compression refrigeration cycle there is superheating of vapor coming out of evaporator there is subcooling of uh, the liquid desic uh, sorry the subcooling of liquid refrigerant and there are pressure drops at various points and because of uh, uh, pressure drops the compressor has to overcome higher pressure uh, 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 pressure rise and uh, because of that the compressor work is higher and uh, that uh, tends to decrease the cop of the system and the numerical solved or the equations that we talked about were all related to the energy not entropy so it was basically first law analysis but now the second law analysis is also getting more and more importance because it gives insight into which component has low second law efficiency and based on that one can focus upon improvement of that com component and Im improve the performance of that component which will help increase the performance of the overall system so let us talk about the actual vapor compression refrigeration cycle the second law uh, analysis of uh, uh, that Uh, so the reasons for irreversibility or entropy generation in a system are pressure drops mechanical friction non equilibrium compression and expansion and heat transfer with finite temperature difference the second law analysis of vcr system would point out the components with high entropy generation so for each component will be finding the entropy generation in that component or entropy generation rate if you are taking the steady flow energy equation and this will be targeted for improvement in the can be targeted for improvement in performance the entropy change of a closed system undergoing an infinitesimal reversible process is given as ds is equal to dq by t while the entropy change of an open system undergoing a finite process may be written as so if f is the final state and i is the initial state the entropy change sf minus si this is total change of entropy of the system is equal to integration of delta q upon t performed over uh, reversible process and uh, the there could be multiple streams through which the mass is entering and there could be multiple streams through which the mass is going out so sigma ms in so this is the mass into entropy of the streams which are entering into the system and the second term is those which are leaving the system uh, plus entropy generation rate right so there is this is the difference between first law and second law in first law energy cannot be created cannot be generated or destroyed but here entropy generation takes place so i is the entropy generation now if you are talking about a steady flow steady state systems like the components in vapor compression refrigeration system then you will have to modify this equation and when you say steady flow steady state it means that at a given point of time or rather at a given point in space the properties are not changing the system properties are uh, not changing okay so the properties of the system are not changing with time so left hand side of this equ uh, the this equation is zero and all terms can be written in time rate units okay so left hand side of this previous equation is uh, put to zero equated to zero and uh, you are writing rates for all the terms and you are writing in form of irreversibility rate how you can get the irreversibility rate okay and the temperature that you are talking about is the surrounding temperature or the uh, or the ambient temperature so this equation can be may be used to find entropy generation rate for a refrigeration system and its components working as steady state systems okay so from the understanding of the second law you know that Uh, uh, the generation of irreversibility is not desirable or higher the irreversibility is in a process 
the the performance of that cycle would be inferior so that is what will be established here uh, with the help of one example so this is the example that we want to solve now this here we are talking about an actual system this is very similar to the system that we used in practical for analysis right the room air conditioners uh, room air conditioner that we talked about uh, so similar vapor compression refrigeration system has been illustrated here so i'll read the data an air cooled direct expansion single stage mechanical vapor compression refrigerator uses r22 and operates under steady conditions so it's an air cooled uh, system right uh, the uh, the condenser is air cooled that is it is cooled with the help of ambient air as well as the evaporator also provides cooling to air it uh, like uh, it's not like the water chilling plant where the uh, uh, water uh, temperature is reduced in the evaporator or uh, it's there is no water cooled condenser where you are using the cooling tower water for cooling of the condenser cooling in the condenser so this is all air cooled there is a figure uh, which will also uh, be seen just after a moment uh, single stage me mechanical vapor compression refrigeration system and the refrigerant is r22 and it operates under steady condition so this analysis is for steady flow steady state condition a schematic drawing of this system is shown in the figure pressure drop occurs in all piping and heat gains or losses occur as indicated so the figure will be shown to you and where all such things uh, are illustrated power input includes compressor power and the power required to operate both fans okay so if you think of an air conditioner there are two fans one fan which is used to take the ambient air and cool the condenser and second one which takes the room air and uh, uh, it cools it and puts it back into the room the table provides there is a table which will provide you the enthalpy entropy and specific volume okay properties sorry table provides the pressures and temperatures measured by measured at the key points indicated in the diagram so now we are not talking about just three points we'll be talking about uh, i think we'll be talking about seven points uh, the, yeah so it's a seven point cycle which will be discussed uh, the properties like uh, now these properties like enthalpy entropy specific volume can be calculated using the property tables and interpolation wherever required but directly provided here so now again from the first practical you already have a knowledge of how to read the properties from property tables again if some property is not at, at given parameters if it is not directly available from table how to interpolate and find the required value so that is that procedure is also understood by you but here just uh, for uh, ease uh, you are already given uh, that right but uh, when you solve this example you should read those values from the table uh, required values from the table and uh, also find the properties that required points from the tables calculate energy transfers to or from the refrigerant in each component of the system and determine second law irreversibility rate in each component show that the total irreversibility rate multiplied by absolute ambient temperature is equal to the difference between actual power input and power required by carnot cycle operating between tr tr is the refrigeration temperature and to to is the ambient temperature with the same refrigerating load okay so it will be shown that what how we will be finding the carnot cycle efficiency for the given cycle because you know refrigeration temperature and the uh, ambient temperature so uh, using those two you can find out the uh, the cop of the carnot cycle when you will compare it with the cop in the given cycle and you will show that the decrease in the cop of this actual cycle is due to the entropy generation right? so that will also be shown to you so basically 
uh, you can easily state that if, if irreversibilities are less, then the cycle will um, um, cycle COP will move towards the Carnot cycle efficiency or rather COP, which is the highest COP that you can get between two uh, temperature limits, TO and TR. And this cycle is also to be plotted on pH chart for R22. So you already have the pH chart for R22. You should also plot this actual cycle on uh, pH chart R22. You did somewhat similar exercise again in the practicals, um, but there we had only two pressures, the condenser pressure and the evaporator pressure. But here all pressure drops are also given. So in other components also there are pressure drops. Accordingly, you should also draw inclined lines wherever there is a pressure drop because like uh, the pressure is on the vertical axis. So uh, if, uh, like if pressure is decreasing, then it, the line will be sloping down. The following performance data are also obtained. So this is the. Uh, uh, th this is the figure provided. And so I'll explain you the figure now and uh, uh, the, some data mentioned here. So ambient temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. Refrigerated space temperature is minus 10 degree Celsius. So this could be a cold storage. And uh, let's say the product is to be maintained at minus 5 degrees Celsius or minus uh, 2 degrees Celsius. So uh, the space temperature is minus uh, 10 degrees Celsius. Actually, even here, there is no distinction made between the space temperature and the refrigerant temperature. And ambient temperature is 30 degree. Refrigeration load is 7 kilowatt. Right? So it seems to be a small system. Refrigerated load is 7 kilowatt. Compressor power input is 2.5 kilowatt. Condenser fan input is 0.15 kilowatt or 150 watts. Evaporator fan input is 0.11 kilowatt or 110 watts. Okay. So let us now focus on this figure. So here you see one dotted rectangle and this rectangle is nothing but refrigerated room, okay, refrigerated room where you are probably keeping the product. And there is a fan here, evaporator fan, and this is direct expansion evaporator. Okay. So when you are using this is TEV, that is thermostatic expansion valve. So when you uh, use refrigerant directly in the evaporator, it boils in the evaporator. At that time, you call it direct expansion evaporator. And when you are using chilled water, you are you calling it a chilled water coil. Right? So this is direct expansion evaporator like the system demonstrated to you in the first practical. And there is an evaporator fan which will take air from this refrigerated room and it will uh, uh, throw it over this evaporator. It will get cooled. Its enthalpy will decrease. It will again go back into the room. right? And there will be certain load on the room right? due to different reasons. We are not going into that area as of now. And this is thermostatic expansion wall and you can see the sensing bulb is put at the outlet of the evaporator. So it was told that uh, like uh, depending upon the degree of superheat at this point, the wall gets opened or closed and that's how it controls the mass of the refrigerant entering into the evaporator. Okay. Now the exit from the evaporator just after the evaporator is shown as point 0.1. So that's where your cycle starts. And you can see that this uh, OK, let's start from point one. So there is a line between point one and point two. Point two is the entry to the compressor. Right. Uh, it was. Earlier what we used to do is whatever is the exit from evaporator, same is the entry to the compressor. But here you are talking about the suction line and it has some finite length. It's not having zero length. It's having some finite length. And in this suction line, because the refrigerant is at a temperature higher than the 
sorry lower than the ambient temperature uh, uh, there is a heat transfer into the refrigerant into the system or into the refrigerant so qsl is shown right suction line q dot sl and you know the direction that the heat is absorbed by the refrigerant and uh, where is the heat coming from it's coming from atmosphere ambient and the temperature of the ambient is to now so it gets uh, it will already be superheated at point 1 right because of a few degrees of superheat based on which the thermostatic expansion valve performs but in addition to that there is some additional heat addition into the suction line and because of that there is further superheating and before the refrigerant enters into the compressor it is already superheated now you have to supply work to the compressor so that it increases the pressure and along with that as you know the temperature also increases and the outlet condition from the compressor is 3 okay now the compressor there is a so system interactions are also shown in the in this figure right so uh, you from this type of diagram you can uh, you can learn how to draw uh, as we call it self explanatory diagram right so it it is uh, almost all required information are given shown schematically so this shows that there is interaction of the compressor because compressor is part of your system but the motor you can say is out of the system which is providing power to the compressor so the compressor is doing work upon the system or on the refrigerant and that comes from outside okay so that is the interaction of the system with the surroundings compressor work is supplied to the system now though in the standard vcr cycle we say that the compression process is adiabatic that is there is no heat transfer between system and surroundings in the compressor control volume but in the actual system because the compressor deals with high temperature vapor of the refrigerant obviously there is going to be some heat loss into the surroundings now how much is the heat loss uh, it is of what percentage as compared to the enthalpy so when you solve this example you will have all these figures and you will be, you will appreciate that yes this is a very small number as compared to the enthalpy change and that's the reason why we do not uh, uh, like pay much importance to the heat loss from the compressor right so you will be able to uh, see the figures compare the figures and you will be able to uh, appreciate uh, uh, the, the fact the assumptions that we make and the heat loss from the compressor again the heat transfer is occurring near ambient temperature to so not just uh, heat heat uh, transfer or the nomenclature for that is shown but the temperature at which it occurs is also shown now the next thing is the vapor refrigerant vapor which is coming out of the compressor and going towards the condenser and that line is called discharge line and you can see that this discharge line see you are going to insulate this suction line you don't want this heat to unnecessarily penetrate into the refrigerant right but still you cannot have a perfect insulation and there is going to be some heat transfer but could be low if you insulate it and but here this line you are not going to insu insulate this line there is no point in insulating this line because the temperature is already higher than the ambient temperature and the condenser is anyway going to reject heat to the ambient so you don't have any problem if there is some heat loss from this line so you should not uh, insulate unnecessarily insulate this line and there is a, because this is already at a temperature it is superheated right so the temperature is obviously much higher than the ambient temperature and there is going to be the heat loss into the surroundings so that's written as discharge line so q dot dl and it is also occurring near ambient temperature so to 
Now the entry to the condenser is at point is shown as point four. It is an air cooled condenser, and as you can see, there is a condenser fan, and condenser fan is taking the ambient air, and it is bringing it over the condenser, air cooled condenser. You all already know the coil, how, uh, which type of heat exchanger it is. Many surfing the tube heat exchanger. So refrigerant passes through the tubes. There are multiple passes, multiple rows through which the refrigerant flows, and there are fins provided over that. And you are blowing air over that. So the air takes away the heat from the refrigerant. So this is the condenser fan, which is also consuming some work. And the heat is rejected <coughs> at what rate? Q dot C is the rate at which the heat is rejected from the condenser into the atmosphere or surroundings. So that is again at temperature T O. So now it gets desuperated, refrigerant gets desuperated, it gets condensed, converts from vapor to liquid, and you have liquid refrigerant coming out of the condenser, which is shown as 0.5. And most of the times it will be slightly subcooled. That is, its temperature will be slightly less than the saturation temperature, saturation temp, uh, uh, temperature at the given pressure. That is condenser pressure. The temperature will be slightly less than that. And now it is in liquid form. So this line is called liquid line. And because your compressor and condensers are many times a bit away from the evaporator and expansion wall, there could be a long liquid line. So this is the liquid line which is carrying the liquid refrigerant and the temperature of the condenser is higher than the ambient temperature. Only then it can reject heat to the ambient. So the refrigerant which is coming out of the condenser, though it may be slightly subcooled, it will be never it will never be less than the ambient temperature. So it is still at a temperature slightly higher than the ambient temperature. And there could be again heat loss from the. Uh, uh, there could be heat loss. From the liquid line into the atmosphere and here we are talking about the air cooled condenser, not water cooled condenser. So this temperature will always be higher than the temperature of the ambient. Right? So there could be little heat loss from the liquid line also. And uh, then uh, the entry to the thermostatic expansion wall is shown as 0 0.6 and that 0 0.6 uh, it's having at it's uh, at a higher pressure and thermostatic expansion wall increases sorry reduces the pressure pressure drop occurs along with that there is a temperature drop also and a part of the liquid refrigerant flashes into vapor and the entry to the direct expansion evaporator is shown as 0.7. So 6, 7 is still they are close to each other, and uh, uh, it's uh, uh, like the thermostatic expansion wall and the evaporator are generally kept very close to each other. And this is also an isenthalpic process. Even in the actual systems, we all uh, take it as an isenthalpic process only. And the 0.7 is the entry to the evaporator. So the refrigerant is at a temperature less than the refrigerated room temperature and it takes heat from the refrigerated room. It uh, converts into like the liquid starts converting into vapor absorbing heat. And finally, when it comes out, it is slightly superheated and it uh, the, this is uh, gained by the refrigerant by absorbing heat from the refrigerated space and the evaporator fan is taking air from the room. So air is the media. Uh, taking air from the room and uh, it is uh, cooled by this evaporator and it comes out and again offsets the load on the room. Okay. So and this heat transfer rate is QE dot, right? The heat heat uh, absorbed by the evaporator and only this heat exchange process occurs at TR, the refrigerated space temperature. So this is the description about the system and various parameters in the system. Now this table gives you the data for various points shown here. So it starts from state one. 
So state one is the outlet of the evaporator. And uh, what is the pressure measured? 310 kilopascal is the pressure measured. And the corresponding temperature, if you, uh, yeah, uh, corresponding temperature is minus 10 degrees Celsius. Now, if you refer to the R22 saturated properties table, at pressure 310, the temperature could be little less than minus 10. And minus 10 is slightly superheated. Okay, it is slightly superheated. You can confirm by referring to the tables of R22. And now at this point, the specific enthalpy is 402, specific entropy is 1.7810, specific volume is 0 0.0755 eight meter cube per kg. So these are the like uh, the first two columns are measured parameters. The other are computed. That is you refer the tables and then if whenever interpolation is required, you do that and then you compute it. Right. So uh, try to understand all this data, though the computed data is already given to you ready made in this table. You should refer the tables and check whether these things the way the computation done here is correct or not. Okay. Uh, this example is again taken from uh, ASHRAE handbook. Uh, okay. yeah. mm, now, uh, the next point, point number two, which is entry to the compressor. And you can see pressure is 304. So you can see that six kilopascal pressure drop has occurred in the suction line, in the suction line. And the temperature, when it came out of the refrigerated space, was minus 10 but there is some heat gain in the uh, heat gain in the suction line and because of that the temperature has increased to minus 4 and you also get the specific enthalpy 406 uh, entropy 1.7984 and specific volume 0 0.07946 again from the table and interpolation next point 3 is the outlet from the compressor. And you can see that now the pressure has increased from 304 to 1450. And the temperature is also measured. See, pressure and temperature both are measured, right? You are not taking uh, any assumption for uh, temperature. Uh, only then you will know whether it is saturation temperature or superheated or uh, uh, okay, what. So this is at 82 degree Celsius as measured and if you refer the superheated properties of r22 you get the specific enthalpy 454.2 and uh, entropy 1.8165 specific volume 0 0.02057 now here you can see that uh, uh, not just enthalpy has increased but also the entropy has increased so the in standard cycle, ideal cycle, we make an assumption that the, that the uh, process of compression is isentropic. But here you can see that entropy has increased in spite of some heat loss which has occurred from the compressor. See the heat loss when it occurs it would reduce the system entropy. I'm not saying it will reduce the entropy of the universe. It, will, it can reduce the or it will reduce the entropy of the system. But the addition to the surroundings will be even more. So the entropy of the universe will finally increase. But uh, the entropy of the system can decrease if there is a uh, heat loss from the system. But in spite of little heat loss, the entropy of the system has increased in the process 2-3, which is the compression process. Right? Now let us talk about point 4. So point four is uh, just uh, like uh, this uh, uh, discharge line. And what happens in that line, there is some pressure drop 15 kilopascal. Temperature drop has occurred from 82 to 70 because the temperature was much higher than the ambient temperature and the uh, line could be long and you are allowing the heat, run, heat loss to occur. So it has reached to 70 degree Celsius when it enters into the condenser and at that point the specific en enthalpy 444 entropy 1.7891 so you can see entropy has decreased because there is a heat loss from the discharge line and specific volume 
has also slightly decreased right now next point is point number 5 which is the outlet from the condenser right outlet from the condenser so this it is this point right it is this point outlet from the condenser so now i read it from the table what are the properties so the pressure at the inlet to the condenser was 1435 but in the condenser there is a pressure drop of 25 kilopascal and the temperature has decreased from 70 degree celsius to the saturation temperature the heat rejection has occurred at saturation temperature the vapor has converted into liquid and there is some subcooling which is expected and after that it comes out at 34 degree celsius from the condenser so con phi is the condenser outlet and at that point the enthalpy is 241 the entropy is 1.14 and the specific volume now you can see it has decreased much because now it is all liquid so 0.00086 is the specific volume now 0.6 is the entry to the thermostatic expansion valve and phi 6 is the liquid line and in liquid line because it is liquid the pressure drop is not very high phi kilopascal you can see that the temperature has decreased by 1 degree because this 34 is not much higher than uh, the 30 degree celsius ambient temperature so you cannot expect a high amount of heat uh, loss and it has decreased by just 1 degrees and specific uh, enthalpy at that point and entropy and specific volume these you can get from the saturated table though it is subcooled the temperature uh, you can just take the temperature as reference and at that temperature you can find these properties pressure doesn't matter much uh, when it is subcooled and the process 6 7 is the expansion process which occurs in thermostatic expansion valve and uh, the pressure at point 7 is measured and is 320 kilopascal and the temperature is minus 12.8 so you can see that you are going below the refrigerated room temperature uh, so that there is a heat transfer and uh, the temperature at the entry to the evaporator is minus 12.8 and the properties at those points are also found from the or calculated from the table okay now once you have tabled all the required data now you can start working towards the solution and uh, uh, so now let's take the parts one by one and uh, analyze them we want what do we want to find we want to find entropy generation rate for all the components so for the first component that is evaporator i want to find out the entropy generation rate so this which is the equation that i'll use you can see the equation that will be used so it is this equation so i dot it's written 7 to 1 that is the evaporator i'm referring to the bottom the equation uh, seen at the bottom so i dot 7 1 that is in the evaporator the entropy generation rate is m dot s1 minus s7 minus uh, q dot for that component divided by tr right this comes from the equation that we already talked about here uh, but here there is no not there are not uh, multiple uh, streams there is only one stream and again m dot is same for this uh, in inlet and outlet right so that can be taken out and this will be just the s out minus s in and uh, in uh, and uh, this will be q dot upon t surroundings right so that equation has been put here and uh, now there you need this q dot right you need this q dot and uh, you also need m dot hmm, the mass flow rate so for that you will need to do the first law analysis first right so you are writing this equation q dot for the evaporator is m dot h1 minus h7 okay now here you are uh, taking into account the sign right otherwise uh, there could be problem 
right you may not get the correct answer so here though we did not pay much attention to that in the uh, first law analysis here in this fact second law analysis you should uh, or you must uh, take into account the direction so this is m dot h1 minus s7 out minus in enthalpy right so enthalpy values are already there with you and you also know the rate of cooling that you want to provide 7 kilowatt so based on that you can get the mass flow rate so mass flow rate is 0.04322 right so once you get the mass flow rate now you can apply the second law analysis and you want to get i dot for the evaporator uh, so that's m dot into s1 minus s7 minus q dot upon tr so m dot is known s1 minus s7 from the table and what is the direction of uh, q dot uh, q dot right the system is absorbing heat so that's positive right this negative sign is already there but this uh, q dot is 7 plus 7 right so uh, if it is in the other direction it will become plus minus into minus will become plus but here it is the system is absorbing heat so it's uh, positive and uh, you uh, write 7 here and here the temperature is the refrigerated space temperature which is minus 10 degree celsius so 273.15 minus 10 263.15 so the entropy generation rate in the evaporator is 0.4074 watt per kelvin okay now suction line suction line the uh, uh, you don't know at what rate is the heat uh, uh, being lost from the suction line but you know the en enthalpies 2 and 1 so based on that you can get that again the system is uh, now here the system is suction line so system is losing heat right uh, so i'm sorry six, six, uh, system is uh, gaining heat because the temperature is less than the ambient temperature and h2 minus h1 and m dot so 0.1802 kilowatt is the heat gained by the refrigerant in the suction line again this q was necessary to find the entropy generation rate in the entropy generation rate in the suction line so i dot for the suction line is m dot into s2 minus s1 minus q dot upon to right so m dot known s2 minus s1 from the tables minus now again the heat is gained by the system suction line the temperature is less than ambient so it is gaining heat so it is positive positive 0.1802 as already found divided by now it is to the heat exchange is occurring near the ambient temperature so the suction line is exposed to ambient so 30 degrees celsius so 273.15 plus 30 that is 303.15 that is what is uh, put there and you get the entropy generation rate in the suction line right so you can see in the evaporator it was uh, 0.1802 kilowatt sorry uh, in the evaporator the entropy generation rate was 0.1575 and here the evaporator yeah it was 0.4074 and in the suction line it would be less than that it is 0.1575 now let's talk about the compressor compressor again what you don't know work is given and uh, the enthalpies are also given hmm? enthalpies are also given but uh if there are any questions i'll address it at the end so enthalpies are also given uh, what you don't know is the heat transfer or heat loss from the compressor so from the first law analysis you are finding that number the heat loss from the compressor so m dot is known h3 h2 are known and the compressor work it is here it plus sign but it is being done upon the system system is not producing work so minus 2.5 kilowatt right 
so that's what you are writing and you are getting the heat loss rate from the compressor 0.4276 kilowatt is the rate at which the heat is being lost from the compressor second law equation i dot m dot s3 minus s2 outlet minus inlet minus q3 dot upon to so those numbers are put and here q dot this q dot the heat loss the system is losing heat so it's negative so this is negative put here negative negative make, will make it positive and you divide it by the again this heat transfer is occurring near ambient temperature so 303.15 so this gives you the entropy generation rate in the compressor and you can see that this number is quite high as compared to the previous two numbers right so the entropy generation in the compressor is high so this tells you that there is a scope of improvement in the compression process and reduce the entropy generation rate in the compressor right. and here the actual cycle is also shown and uh, uh, so you can see 7 to 1 pressure drop is also shown in the evaporator and there is further superheating little pressure drop uh, this is just using the data of temperature and pressure given in the table and uh, plotting the points. Of course, this point, intermediate points like A, B, C, D, you don't get from the data. You directly get it for three, right? But uh, 2A and A, D are uh, what is happening in the compressor. In the suction wall, there is a pressure drop. Again, there is a heating of the refrigerant in the compressor because compressor components are hot and then compressor has to increase the pressure to higher level because there is a pressure drop in the discharge valve and then it comes to 0.3 and 0.3 to 4 is the pressure drop and temperature drop in the discharge line and 4.6, uh, 4.5 is occurring in the condenser, 5.6 is occurring in the liquid line and 6.7 is occurring in the, 6.7 is occurring in the uh, expansion valve. Now, if your temperature is 30, this is the uh, uh, this is the cycle. That will the So let us now similar things are there so I can go a bit fast discharge line energy balance is done and you can see that discharge line uh, 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 the compressor to condenser so there is a the system or the refrigerant is losing heat and that is equal to minus 0.4274 kilowatt second law analysis you can uh, carry out and uh, I dot is uh, uh, again found and what you find is that in the discharge line the entropy generation rate is 0.2258 and then condenser energy balance is done uh, so that you get the rate at which the heat is rejected and you get it uh, again system is losing heat so minus 8.7698 kilowatt is the rate at which the heat is being rejected into the atmosphere you can use the second law equation now and uh, S, uh, m dot into s5 minus s4 uh, this q dot is negative 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 will make it positive again the heat exchange is near ambient temperature 303.15 and you get the entropy generation rate in the condenser and then the liquid line the liquid line is also losing little heat so again you can you get this small number 0 0.0549 kilowatt again you apply the second law equation and uh, you see this is negative negative will make it positive and the entropy difference and the mass flow rate and you see that there is little uh, entropy generation even in the liquid line now expansion valve is uh, energy balance the enthalpy difference is zero so there is no heat transfer also you can apply, use the second law equation but the last term will be missing it's just m dot into entropy difference so you can see that there is entropy generation even in the expansion valve 0.8730 watt per kelvin so now all 
data are tabulated here evaporator like what is the heat exchange rate that is given what is the work rate that is given uh, except compressor there is no work done uh, or work uh, consumed or work produced i dot whatever we calculated all of them are there so you can see in the evaporator is 0.4 which one is highest compressor 2.1928 so one should focus on one compressor and improve its performance expansion device is also it's go, going to increase your entropy because uh, uh, it's isenthalpic process and the entropy is going to increase if you can use a turbine or expander you would be able to reduce this so thermodynamically it's always uh, good to have an expander right but uh, practical uh, issues uh, and uh, the cost related issues make you use the expansion isenthalpic expansion device condenser also there is some uh, significant uh, entropy generation you can reduce this if you can uh, decrease the pressure drop and if you can decrease the temperature difference between the ambient and the refrigerant and uh, uh, so these are the main things evaporator also there is some uh, entropy generation rate again if you reduce the uh, temperature difference between the refrigerated space and the refrigerant and also decrease the pressure drops then you can uh, reduce these values so here in form of percentage also it has been given so what will be the cop of a reverse carno cycle it depends upon the refrigerated space temperature and to minus tr right so it should be 6.579 as per the reverse carno cycle now the power requirement of the uh, compressor is uh, is also given and uh, uh, the 7 that is 7 kilowatt right but ideal would be uh, uh, okay no i'm sorry 7 kilowatt is the load refrigerated load if you are following the reverse carno cycle then based on this cop you would need 1.064 kilowatt of power consumption what is the actual power consumption it is 2.5 kilowatt and you can show that uh, this carno work for the compressor plus i dot into to right i dot is 4.7351 and to is 303.15 right so if you add those things together you get the actual work consumption which is 2.5 kilowatt right this is almost 2.5 kilowatt it means that because of i dot your actual power has in increased and obviously that cop is uh, 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 less right as compared to the carno cycle cop because of the higher work consumption or power consumption okay so this is uh, about the second law analysis and uh, getting some insight about uh, which components are uh, uh, have potential for improvement so that you can improve the performance or the cop of the system further right and uh, the some exercises assignment are given uh, the these are uh, some like uh, excerpts from tables also taken but you already have the tables you can use them and uh, the, the the example that was shown to you was a full fledged example uh, but it's obviously very lengthy in place of that uh, you might have to do analysis of a single component so such example is shown here uh, so it's for r134a and uh, enters into compressor at 0 and 2 bar pressure outlet from the compressor is 80 and 10 bar and compressor work is given mass flow rate of refrigerant is given ambient temperature is given and you have to find the irreversibility rate in the compressor right so this is one example for compressor and uh, these are the answers you can solve it and uh, Uh, check whether you get the same answer or not and uh, then one more example is given for condenser right so the required parameters for the condenser are given in this example and based on that you find the irreversibility rate for the condenser okay so this is about the second law analysis in the uh, for the vapor actual vapor compression refrigeration cycle